Welcome back guys to another video. So the first question we've got here, okay, we've got a displayed formula, all right, of a of a molecule. Um, if you want to have a go at naming that, uh, you can. When the answer slide comes up, I'll I'll let you know what it's called. So the question says, calculate the relative formula mass, the MR, of the hydrocarbon in the diagram above. And the question even gives you the relative atomic masses. So hydrogen is 1 and carbon is 12. And this questions like this are, are, are literally just code breaking. Okay, We need to substitute in the 1 for where the H's are and the 12's for the carbons and then literally just add up the numbers that we've got to give us our total. Again, if you want to try and name that and then on the next slide I'll let you know what it's called. So pause the video now and then attempt the question. Okay, so on the previous page we had a three carbon hydrocarbon chain. So if you remember with your um, prefixes, uh, meth would be one, eth would be two carbons and pro is for three carbons so that would be propane that we had there the answer is there for you to use um, or amend your work or put any corrections in and then move to the next question okay so in this particular example we've got um, an example where it's been put into context a bit more looking at fertilizers and it states that 50 kilograms of fertilizer A will cover an area of 0.01 kilometers squared. It then asks you to calculate the cost of fertilizing a field with an area of 0.05 kilometers squared with fertilizer A. So essentially you've you've got to notice that the cost in the table is per kilogram okay so you've got 50 kilograms so that's the first thing you're gonna have to work out and then also the area that you're trying to cover is five times as big as the the area that a 50 kilogram fertilizer will cover so again you've got a, a second calculation to make there pause the video now and attempt the question Okay, use the mark scheme to mark your work or make any corrections. The third question we're looking at is atom economy. Okay, so the percentage atom economy for a reaction is calculated using the formula below. The equation of the reaction of copper carbonate and sulfuric acid is given to you and it even gives you the relative formula mass of the compounds within that reaction. So you're then asked to calculate the percentage atom economy for making copper sulfate from copper carbonate. So if you look at the, the formula that's given to you, the relative formula mass of the desired product from the equation, okay, so you've got to work out what the desired product is from those three products you have. And then you need to put that all over the sum of the relative formula mass of all the reactants from the equation. Okay, so all of the things on the left. Okay. And then that will give you your once you've multiplied it by 100 will give you your atom economy. Pause the video now and attempt the question. Another question here, uh, sorry, that's the mark scheme for the previous question. If you use this just to mark your work or make any corrections. Okay, the question we've got now, calculate the percentage of iron in iron fluoride. So again, you're going to need to be able to calculate the relative formula mass of iron chloride. You're going to need to know the relative atomic mass of iron. Um, and then you're going to have to make a division calculation with those two numbers um, in order 
and multiply it by 100 in order to give you your percentage composition by mass. Pause the video now and attempt the question. The mark scheme is here for you to mark your work or to make any amendments. Uh, this question we've seen previously, um, so it, it came up when we were looking at uh, atomic structure, okay, and what you need to do is use the numbers that are given, okay, because it's a calculate question, okay, so you need to use the numbers that are given to you in order to calculate the relative atomic mass of this particular element, okay. It does state clearly to give your answer to three significant figures. So if you don't give your answer to three significant figures, you could well lose a mark for that point. Pause the video now and attempt the question. The mark scheme is here for you to mark for work or to amend it, add any corrections. The next question here, the scientist makes a solution of zinc iodide with a concentration of 0 0.100 moles per decimeter cubed and you're asked to calculate the mass of zinc iodide required to make 250 centimeters cubed of this solution. So you're given the relative atomic masses again, so you don't even have to look those up. And in this scenario, you've got to make the links between mass, moles, relative formula mass, okay? You've also got to make a link between the concentration per decimeter cubed, and then it's asking you how much would be required to make 250 centimeters cubed. So what is the link between decimeters cubed and 250 centimeters cubed? Pause the video now and attempt the question. The mark scheme is here for you to mark your work or make any corrections. The next question is about titrations. So the, the table there shows you some titration results uh, and it gives you the equation for the reaction Okay, so the equation is there, uh, it reveals to you the, the molar ratio uh, within the reaction. Okay, so you've got a 1 to 3 ratio there, okay, on the, in the reactants, and it's 1 to 3 in the products. It tells you the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. It tells you that concordant results are those within 0.1 one zero centimeters cubed of each other so you need to find those from your um, from the table up above and then use that information to calculate the concentration of the citric acid in moles per decimeter cubed use only the concordant results from your table in your calculation and you must show your working if you don't show your working Okay, chances are you'd only get one mark for your answer. So if it says you must show your working, then you definitely must show working. Pause the video now and attempt the question. The mark scheme's here for you to use, correct any work, and make mark it appropriately.